after Russ the Sus and Don the Con, Lynette, John Crook, the Levy County Sheriff, after they put all the fun in dysfunction, the world's got questions and we've got your answers. Jane Lick has a question and she asked this. Could the Ohio court send an arrest warrant to Florida State for the violations of their order and to extradite to Ohio? Can the state police become involved because of the conflict with the sheriff office due to the Martin Cunningham occurrence? All right, I'm going to try and answer both of these. Number one, what Lynette and John Crook did was an absolute violation of the civil protection orders. They cannot be for any reason. There is no valid or invalid. There is no exception whatsoever. They cannot be within 500 feet of me or 500 feet of George. And particularly in the civil protection orders, it writes on any private or public road, any private or public building, meaning town hall. So what's going to happen? Well, we've already filed yet again another lawsuit in Ohio against Lynette and John Crook for this violation. And this time we're asking the judge to mandate that they must go to Ohio. They must show in Ohio. During the last hearing on January 10th, the magistrate stated that she was beyond upset with them and she was going above and beyond to allow them to appear on Zoom. Well, this is not going to happen again. And when they are mandated to show in Ohio for this violation, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to be arrested. And if they pull a no-show, what's going to happen? There's going to be a warrant for their arrest. Second part of the question is, can the state police get involved? Now, I'm not sure exactly who you're talking about. Are you talking about state troopers who are typically on the highways, even though they have authority? Uh, are you talking about the FBI? I'm not sure who you're referring to, but at this point, I have not received any counsel from either my legal team in Ohio or my legal team in Florida that we should involve the state police. We should involve the legal system. They absolutely can be involved and Amanda Martin is currently under investigation by the state attorney's office which she works for. Keep in mind Russ the Sus lied to the Levy County deputies stating that Lynette and John Crook had a valid reason for being there that they were going to be employed on the town council. That's not the way it works at all. As a matter of fact we already have qualifying candidates here is a screenshot of those individuals. You'll see Carl, you'll see Joe, you'll see Stuart Stewart, Laura Mott, you'll see Don the Khan. These are the only individuals that had filled out their paperwork in completion. And I'm emphasizing that because Lynette started to fill out her, her paperwork, but then she wrote a note stating that she was no longer interested and that she was pulling her name. No one can be placed in those seats except these five individuals who have legally qualified to be placed in those seats. Russ the Sus lied. Interesting and ironic that it's Lynette calling Belinda the liar in that meeting. That wasn't the only illegal thing done that day. Leanna Johnson says, and again, Russ the Sus walks out with the recorded minutes. Okay, he is already under investigation for 13 points with the Ethics Committee in Tallahassee. And this is a yet another point that is going to come up of interest as he continues to illegally take town hall minutes. He is in the position of a council member. He is recording. So when everybody thought, okay, I'm watching the meeting, and you can watch the meeting, it's on the channel, and he's fiddling around, instead of the pledge and respecting our flag and our town and its residents and our nation, he's fiddling with the recorder, okay? And once he does that, since he's a town council member, this is town council property. And so he has illegally taken minutes yet again from the building without giving them to the town clerk. I can go in and I can film anything I want and not turn it in because I'm not on the town council. Everybody in the crowd can film anything and record anything they want. They're not on the town council. 
They can film it without having to turn it in. Russ the Sus is on the town council. Therefore, it's public information. It is not owned by Russ the Sus. It is owned by the residents. It is owned by the town of Otter Creek, by the government, and he has illegally removed, yet again, more information from town hall. And why is he doing this? Well, he's in communication with a uh, individual who wants more than anything to be famous, but she's a nothing. She's an absolute nothing. She's actually less than a nothing. But she's trying to gain her fame, which will not happen. Russ the Sus and Don the Con. You know those names. They've got their fame. And so she continues to place all of these individuals in places of further incrimination. It's, it's actually comedic to actually watch it happen. As she's up in New Jersey, they continue to incriminate themselves based on the information she foolishly guides them with. That's not guiding. That's guilting. Making sure they are found guilty in the court of law. Terry McLean says, interesting that Russ the Sus was going to try and appoint Lynette and Crook, even though they filled out no paperwork. So let's digest that a little bit. If you go back and watch the meeting, at no point in time did Russ the Sus ever attempt to appoint John Crook or Lynette. He had tried and he failed miserably. His entire plan blew up in his face. He tried to sit Stuart Stewart who is a candidate for the two-year seat. He never went and tried to sit John Crook. He never went and tried to seat Lynette, which he can't. That's the whole point. There is no legal paperwork. They cannot be seated at all. What they can be is arrested for breaking the civil protection orders. Sue Boyles, in regards to Lynette and Crook, wants to know, how can they even afford that car? Well, here's what happened, Sue. I'm going to break down the timeline for you. George and I purchased this property here in Otter Creek. We start to show some of the corruption. Lynette and John Crook, professional scammers, professional grifters, professional con artists. They go, man, he says he likes turtles. We're going to go see if there's any property. They find 1.66 acres that's for sale across the street from us. They lie to us and tell us they already purchased it. Ask me to bring my tractor over, move a tree. Complete and total falsehood. Complete and total lies. They go back to Northport, where they're from, put the house up for sale, which they then sell. They get a little bit of money. They split that money. They spend the money as fast as possible because these are individuals that don't know how to be stewards of money. What do they do? They buy a Jeep Gladiator. What do they do? They buy a camper. By the way, they don't pay for it in full. They have loans on it. They buy sheds that they live in illegally. And the list can go on and on. It was from the sale of their home after they stalked us here to Otter Creek. After they came and confirmed we were here in Otter Creek and that they could communicate with us and I would bring a tractor over as they had me illegally trespassing on a piece of property they told me they owned, but they did not. It wasn't until they confirmed that we were here and across the street that they went home, sold the house, then purchased the property. Rootin' Tootin' or Rudy Tootie Texas TX says, were any of these deputies, officers, were they related to Rhett or Rat? Rhett the Rat. Stephen Rhett the Rat Cunningham? And the answer is no, there is no relation. So Amanda Martin has that been married of. multiple times now. As a matter of fact, George, how many times? Five that we have found? Okay, four, four. You know, she's catching up with Lynette. She's really, she's catching up with Lynette, and I'm sure, I'm sure she'll get there sooner or later. Uh, Lynette is in her 60s. Amanda Martin's 39, 40-ish now. So, Rat, or Rhett, or Stephen Rhett, the Rat Cunningham, his biological father passed away. That's sad, and it's unfortunate. Amanda Martin is a homewrecker and is now married to Tom, Deputy Tom Martin, who is on the Levy County Sheriff's uh, Force. And so the relation is not there except that Tom would be a stepfather, but there was still no relation with the two deputies that showed up to town hall that day. I should probably emphasize that we know of, because the one thing that we have found about this area, everybody is related. Somehow, someway, the inbreeding seems to be a bit out of control. 
Sylvia wants to know, when is the state attorney finally going to do something? When somebody gets hurt? Well, keep in mind, the state attorney received our civil protection orders and in writing told the Levy County Sheriff that he encouraged them not to enforce it. That is against state law of Florida and state statutes, which is the law, and federal law. So now the state attorney has incriminated himself and created tremendous amounts of liability for the state of Florida. Not until we actually have threatened lawsuit publicly on YouTube has the state attorney now come around and said, you know what, I think we are going to enforce it. Now this is just my opinion, as it always is, right? This is me exercising my freedom of speech, sharing my opinion on this. I believe the state attorney is only trying to go through the motions to appease us and to uh, alleviate a lawsuit. And yet, as Crook and Lynette continue to break the civil protection orders and nothing happens, nothing happens, they further and further and further incriminate not only themselves but the state of Florida and so what is it going to take when we get shot they've threatened publicly that's what's going to happen we'd have a firearm already pulled out on me they've posted publicly they're going to pop a sh they're going to pop a cap in my and you can fill in the blank there Josh Fly has a little something to share here he says you know dang well those deputies would have gotten you for breaking the protection order if you had went but it's a bit of walking on eggshells when Lynette breaks it against George. You understand, and I'm sure everybody understands, this was a setup to try and get me to break the protection order. Now, when you park outside of town hall at 445, and the meeting's not till 7, and all of the residents of Otter Creek want nothing to do with Lynette or Crook, who do you think is contacting us? Every resident is letting us know they're parked out there. How foolish! This is a plan that backfires completely in their faces. I don't go. Because unlike Lynette and Crook, I actually respect the law. And as such, even though I don't agree with what Judge DeThomasis has done to me, even though I believe that it's illegal what he's done to me, taking away my freedom of speech, taking away my property, taking away access to my property on the road, putting a temporary injunction on me based on nothing that I've done, but stuff that Lynette has lied about stating that others has done. I'm not okay with that. But I still will respect everything he says until it changes through the legal process. And you see on the other side, Lynette and Crook have no respect whatsoever for any laws. And ultimately, what will happen to them? I've already shared previously. Ohio is now going to force them to show in person in the state where they will be arrested immediately. She stated that her lawyer told her this was okay. She stated that the state attorney told her that this was okay. Are they both trying to throw her under the bus? Or is Russ the sus throwing her under the bus? It doesn't matter. Either which way, she sealed her fate and Crook's fate in the state of Ohio. Never Woke has an incredible question. He wants to know, are the Meeks parents siblings? And he goes on to say, anyone who have told him to be himself couldn't have given him worse advice. Does Russ wonder what life would be like if he had enough oxygen at birth? Bottom line is calling him stupid would be an insult to stupid people. Never Woke, I will share this. We have found out that Everybody in this area is related somehow. We've already touched base on that. When I go to the dump, oh yeah, I'm related. When I go into another town, oh yeah, I have a relation. When I go anywhere, oh yeah, I'm related. And here's the other thing. The family members have nothing. I have yet to hear one positive thing ever about Russ the Sus. L. Hoff says, I really hope Russ the Sus Don the Khan are expelled permanently from their seats. Is that even possible? Goes on to say, what a show they made. God, I hope it's a drastic, something drastic happens to all those people that were disrespectful to Vice Mayor Zim. What comes around goes around. Lynette continuing to lie to the council and to the community. 
Can't wait for her attorney and the judge to take drastic action against her. She deserves everything she gets. My biggest question is how do they afford that Jeep truck? Well, we already answered the Jeep truck. We're going to take your first question. Can Don and Russ be expelled permanently from the council seats? Under current Florida law, the only way they can be expelled permanently is through the governor, Ron DeSantis, regardless of how you feel about him. All right. This is not a political platform, even though we have found ourselves thrusted within a little tiny town of politics and now a... uh, a little county politics within the court system. We didn't, never wanted to be a part of the politics whatsoever. But now, because of what they've done to us, we've been pushed into it. They poked a bear. The bear came out swinging hard. And so the reality is, Rust the Sus is under ethics violations right now. Yes, Tallahassee can ban him as well. So the authorities in Tallahassee can completely and totally ban him. And I believe they will. Ron DeSantis, the governor, can completely and totally ban him, and I believe they will. But that right now looks like the only two options available. And the option with Tallahassee is probably the most viable option, as he knows he's under investigation, and everybody else now knows he's under investigation. And you gotta believe, he's about crapping his pants trying to figure out what scheme he can pull next to get out of this. Rub Johnson says... Maybe it's Rube. Rub Jane. Oh, Rub Jane. Okay. Well, if Jane was here, I'd help you out, Jane. But I can't. But she says, this keeps getting worse. What will they try next? Take care of yourselves. You really have no rights at this point. Lies, crooks, baby Russ. What are they going to try next? Now, Jane, here's what I think they're going to try next. Next month, there will be another town hall meeting. And it's going to operate the exact same way. Remember, they have a lawyer now who... Russ the Sus and Don the Con wanted more than the other lawyer. This is the lawyer that represented the town against me in the lawsuit with the public records. They wanted her. She's more money. Therefore, maybe in their mind, they're thinking more experienced, better attorney because they're paying more. It's coming out of our pockets, the residents that are paying for this attorney. And right now I'm thrilled about it. Because she put them in their place legally. And the funny thing is, Lynette screaming in there, this is illegal! She's now, okay. the lawyer. So Lynette is now a firefighter. Lynette is now a lawyer, which she's been acting as her own lawyer, but she paid seven grand for a retainer for Joshua. Uh, so now she's a professional lawyer. She must be getting such great advice from Joshua now that she's absolutely going to be arrested in Ohio. I guarantee you they will pull a no-show. I guarantee you there will be a warrant for their arrest. Now she's a lawyer telling an experienced lawyer that this is all illegal. What will happen next? Next month, it'll be the exact same agenda. It's going to be approval of the agenda, approval of the minutes, and it's going to be seating those individuals. Russ and Don, if they even show... Keep in mind, the month before, Zim has an emergency, and they have every bad and negative thing to say about Zim with his family emergency and not showing. Zim's here this month, and then they pull the no-show. They literally wrestle with his big old binder, which he has never, ever brought before. Ever. Now Russell's taking his big old binder and his leash on Don the Count. Let's go! We're leaving! In other words, what they're trying to do is completely and block anything from happening because there's not a quorum. A quorum means a majority. So if there's five seats, a majority could be four, it could be three. If there's only three people there, which there was, Zim and Russell and Don, if Russ and Don... Oh, wait, I gotta be careful. If Russ and Don leave, then it's just Zim is left and nothing can happen. So that's what their goal is. Next month... Russ the Sus and Don the Con will either not show or they will do the exact same thing and walk out. Here's what I find is more interesting. Every time I'm not at a meeting, Russ the Sus is out of control. And if I'm at a meeting, he's actually contained. So it's probably even better that I don't go to the next meeting, regardless of Lynette or Crook, whether they're in jail or not in jail at that point, because who knows what this man is going to do next. Honestly, your guess is as good as mine.
Silver Ante says, what was Don the Con's response when Zim told him to sit down or to leave? Don the Con's response was... It was unexpected. It, it was like a two-year-old throwing a tantrum. It was it was one of the most ridiculous things that we have ever seen. Now, I'm going to share with you with these two two-year seats that Don the Con is up for, Laura Mott is up for, and Stuart Stewart is up for. Honestly, George keeps saying she wants to vote Don the Con back in. And her reason is... Don't tell people who I'm going to vote for. Okay. So her reason is Don the Con is one of the most entertaining fools on this town council. No, he's a sweetheart. Oh, okay. Um, he's actually very nice. I'll, I'll not tell you what she actually says when the camera is off. So he's acting like a two-year-old. What was Don the Con's response when Zim told him to sit down or to leave? I absolutely spat out my tea when he crossed his arm like a five-year-old and said, No! <laughs> and I swear he pouted. He certainly did. And speaking of swearing, what did he say about the Bible needing to be rewritten? Did he really mean that? And then Silver Auntie goes on to say, Don, Don, you better get your life affairs in order. There's going to be a bolt of lightning coming down any minute. Here's the crazy thing. So when the lawyer says the charter needs to be updated, and it's old, it needs to be updated, Don the Con goes, so does the Bible. Now, here's what is, I, I can't get this in my mind. If you missed that part, go back and watch the meeting. Okay. Otter Creek's own ordained minister. Do you get this? Otter Creek's own ordained minister is sitting right behind Don the Con. And what does she have to say about the Bible being old and need, needing to be rewritten? Not a thing. What could she say? She doesn't Not practice or preach. The woman, number one, doesn't know anything about the Bible. The woman, number two, doesn't live out anything about the Bible. And Don the Con, did he mean it? I'm absolutely positively sure he did and i'm sure lynette was probably in the back thinking yep same thing the bible it's illegal it the lied bible to me. it lied to me jesus is a liar shouting at cloud says lynette says she had a temporary injunction on george seriously uh, Lynette is a liar. You should know that by now. And I'm exercising my freedom of speech to call her a liar. I have constitutionally protected freedom of speech to state that she is a liar. And it's truth. She's a pathological, habitual liar. And so she does not have a temporary injunction on George. Now, what she's trying to infer to, which she does a horrible job of doing it, is that the temporary injunction states that no employees, nobody associated with me, nobody, even you watching right now, can state her name, use her image, take video of her. And then it goes on to state case law, except what's protected speech, First Amendment. In other words, everything is permissible as long as I'm not doing things or people associated with me doing things that would be unprotected speech. Now, I'm not even going to get into that venue of what unprotected speech is because there's no doubt Joshua Silverman is watching and he'll utilize this video and say, look, he was promoting unprotected speech. As I've said from day one in Otter Creek, never ever contact anybody in any of these videos. Now, as the Levy County Sheriff will tell you, if you see something, say something. You have every responsibility and legal right to say something when it's wrong, and you say that to the proper authorities. Leave the people of Otter Creek out of it. There should be no communication with them at all. Matt Plant says, why on earth hasn't the Ohio judge expedited this? Throw them in prison after reviewing the countless times they've broken the restraining order. Jeremy and George can then live in happiness. Ohio judge needs to step it up and rectify this quickly before J and H and George get hurt. Step it up. All right, so why hasn't the Ohio judge actually expedited this yet? Well, 
there is a rush order on our behalf to get judgment based on all of their previous violations. And as I've already alluded, there is now yet another case in the Ohio courts where they will be mandated to appear in person. Now, I can't say that with 100% accuracy because that's what we're requesting and that's what the judge actually stated would happen in the last case. I'm going to take her for her word and I'm going to understand that she's an advocate for the victims, a true victim's advocate, not an Amanda Martin who then has her son actually assault and batter me. I'm going to Take her for her word and understand that she really sees what's going on. She's had the opportunity multiple times to talk with Lynette and Crook and has found them guilty again and again. Denise Vunk says, unbelievable. Denise, it's Otter Creek. Come on. You got to believe it. You, you Hollywood script writers couldn't come up with a script like this. Mm -mm. It's every Not twist, in a million years. Every turn. Every day. It is insane and unbelievable. And she goes on to say, Russ and Don thought they had it all figured out at the town hall meeting. They won't even take the ruling of the attorney. Russ says, no. Negative. 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 Uh, uh, negative. To someone who practices <laughs> law and negative. this is her full-time job. Negative. <laughs> negative. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, everyone is supposed to take his word as law. So this is interesting, Denise. You actually uncover something where Russ the Sus wanted this lawyer. And now that this lawyer is actually upholding the law, he doesn't want the lawyer anymore. He's the one that fought to spend the extra money for the lawyer. And now we're all supposed to take his word as law. Now, this is pretty interesting because Russ the Sus won't take anybody's word that doesn't agree with him. As a matter of fact, in the past, when he was mayor, if anybody said anything that disagreed with him, he would adjourn the meeting immediately, illegally, which is one of the issues he is actually under investigation for. Adjourning meetings illegally, adjourning meetings stating sue us. Uh, coming up to me after meetings, threatening. He's pointing at me. Has his hand in his pocket, no doubt with uh, some type of some type of weapon. He's got his hand in his pocket. If you watch, he's fiddling. Was it a knife? Was it a firearm? I, I don't know. But he's in my face, a resident of the community's face. He tells Doug, Belinda's husband, hit me. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine what the state is going to do to this man? And now this man thinks that everybody, including a lawyer who actually has gone to law school, uh, this man who can't even, can't even uh, orchestrate or organize his own life or be a steward of his own life enough not to go and declare bankruptcy multiple times. He's going to tell a lawyer, a very successful, intelligent lawyer, that it's his word, not her word. And then she goes on to say here, Denise says, everything that rolls out of his mouth is a lie. He must have gone the same business school as some other guy I've never heard of before that's been in the news. What happens now, OMG? Well, what happens now is the law trumps Russ the Sus. No matter what Russ the Sus says, Russ the Sus does. I hope you understand that Russ the Sus, number one, had an illegal meeting with all of these individuals beforehand. Don the Con, Lynette, John Crook. As a matter of fact, we have on video, another resident videoed uh, Don the Con being dropped off at Lynette and Crook's by his son, Darren, so that there was no suspicious drop Don the Con off, go talk about all of these things illegally, pick them back up, take them back. You understand there's illegal meetings being held talking about these issues. That breaks sunshine law. Russ the Sus tried to orchestrate this all. Russ the Sus in the last meeting has an illegal meeting outside of town hall announcing on that camera, this is how stupid these people are incriminating themselves over and over and over again what his plan is. And his plan completely and totally backfires in his own face. Negative.
Judy Fretwell says, is that Rat? Rat Cunningham, the son of Amanda Martin, standing next to the guy in the red sweatshirt next to the door. It kind of looked like him. Well, Judy, it was not him. That was the boyfriend of Russ the Suss's granddaughter, the daughter of Charlene, believe it or not. And yeah, she seems like she's a pretty pleasant person. She keeps to herself. She doesn't get involved in the drama, although she is there to support family. Now, that's the thing. It's family. And I understand uh, you want to support family. But when family does something wrong, at some point, you do pull that support. You love the person unconditionally. I, I hope we all understand that. If Russ the Sus was my son, and I know that's so difficult to even comprehend in your mind, the age difference, the competency difference, the intellectual difference, uh, the level of handsomeness difference. Um, we could go on and on, right? But if Russ the Sus was my son, I would not support him in his position of what he's doing. I would still love him as family, but I would not love what that person is actually doing. So his granddaughter is there, has never been vocal. And this is just my guess. It's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Granddaughter wants to support and love family, not necessarily what family is doing. And she's bringing her boyfriend along with her. Although he was pretty vocal outside afterwards with other residents, stating that somebody needed to get a brain. Mary E. Mary wants to know, when is the drama going to stop with Russ the Sus and Don the Con? Mary they're up in age, okay? And I hope you don't misinterpret what I'm about to say, okay? When they're gone, then it will probably stop because individuals like this thrive on it. It's the only thing they have to live for. And it seems so silly to me, okay? The world is such a bigger place. And if, if they could just break out of Otter Creek, go to Cedar Key, go to Bronson, go to Gainesville, go to Tampa, go to Orlando, go to, go to Chiefland. I mean, come on. Otter Creek is a tiny town, just over one square mile. And, and for some reason, they feel like they need to have all authority over anything and everything and everybody, okay? I hope you understand that you have freedoms of what you can do within the law on your properties or property, but they want to control everything or they want to not be controlled by anyone or anything. Well, that's just not the way it works in Otter Creek, in Levy County, in the state of Florida or the United States. We have laws that guide us and govern us. There's organization, there's system. Well, they don't like that. Therefore, they create drama. And their drama and their corruption has been uncovered. Therefore, they don't like YouTube or YouTubers unless they can hatch a plan to try and utilize or use a YouTuber that looks like a busted case of biscuits for their own advantage, which in hindsight has actually incriminated them legally and that busted case of biscuits even further in the laws. Beaver wants to know, was John and Lynette, the crook and the Lynette, were they parked in the handicapped parking? Well, Town Hall is pretty small and so is Otter Creek. So the parking lot isn't really much of a parking lot. And as most places in Florida, it's all sand. So a lot of people don't even put parking lots up. They just drive in the sand or on the grass. And that's pretty much what it is over at Town Hall. So I can't even recall if there's an actual handicap parking. It is. Okay. George says it is handicap parking. Now, why would they park there? Would it be because Crook has had bandages all the way up to his crotch? Which I I'm saying that on purpose because they've stated that in our Ohio case. What are you doing driving past a man in the road with bandages all the way up his crotch? Which my, my response was, I didn't look at his crotch. But there's no doubt he keeps looking at my hind sign 
And he wants to shove stuff in it as he keeps posting. What's he doing in the road in the first place? So why are they parked in the handicap? Well, they tried to camp out there. And I'm not saying it's for the handicap. They could have been anywhere else. It was for entrapment. It was truly, they parked there to try and entrap me in breaking a temporary injunction, which I never even showed up. Can you imagine if I did? Every time I do, Russ the Sus actually behaves. It's almost better that I wasn't there because it's insanity and he criminates himself even more when I'm not there. And the best part of it all is these two fools parked in a handicapped parking spot have now set themselves up to be in Ohio, to be arrested in Ohio, to be jailed in Ohio in the next violation court case. And trapping themselves. Joanne says, what's Russ the Sus bringing this big old binder in for? He's never done that before. Well, it wasn't because he was carrying his brain in there. So my guess is that binder held paperwork from the town charter. And he came prepared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm prepared with my plan. Negative. Negative. You, your plumber called me personally. And I'm sure that was probably, I'm guessing, the town charter. We're going to look at the town charter right now. And then the lawyer says, your town charter says, you shall. You shall. And she goes on to say that the town charter is old and needs to be rewritten. And then Don goes on to say, well, so does the Bible. One of the most cringe-worthy, disgusting things Don has ever said in his life. No doubt. I think it was the charter. Does he actually know the charter? I don't think so. He's been corrected so many times by so many other residents. One of the very first things I did when I got to Otter Creek is I asked for the charter. Mary never gave it to me. Another council member did, D Captain Dan. And Captain Dan, you, you really don't see much. If you've seen him in any of the town hall meetings, he's typically asleep. But he gave me a binder. Whether it was a full binder or not, I went and digitized the entire thing, turned it into a PDF, and I emailed it to any resident in Otter Creek that wanted it. Now, I didn't email it to, to Russ the Sus. You know why? I don't do email. Angela makes a uh, crazy observation. Has anyone noticed that Lynette has dyed her hair black? Trying to look exactly like George? Um, yeah, we happen to notice that. And we happen to notice any time we put out a video and we say certain statements, that follows out of their mouths. We notice that any time we put out a video and we say, this is what we're going to do next in court, that's what they attempt to do. It's pretty sickening that they're trying to actually look like us now, too. Crook's driveway will never be as big as mine, though. Judy Kogan's got tons of questions, so I'll try and address them all. She says, I can't take this anymore. Is Zim the mayor? All right, so Judy, officially right now, there is no mayor. Vice Mayor Zim, emphasis on vice, is still vice mayor. So the way that Otter Creek actually gets a mayor, they first must have a quorum. A quorum is a majority of members. Again, we have five total seats. Two of them are empty right now. And therefore, a majority out of three people would be two people. So we need two people to actually vote Vice Mayor Zim as the mayor. He's acting right now as the mayor, even though he's not the mayor, because that would be the proper thing for him to do in this situation, right? So Vice Mayor Zim is not the mayor. We currently do not have a mayor. And Judy goes on to say, who is taping all this? Who's taping it all? Well, Judy, if you took a peek in town hall, the answer is everyone, literally everyone is out with cell phones now like this because Jeremy and George come to Otter Creek and all of a sudden, everybody now wants to be a tube, a tube towner, not an Otter Creekian. They all want to be a part of tube town. Did you see Lynette filming? Yep. Mm -hmm. And she's against Tube Town, but yep, she wants to be right in it. And we have all the screenshots that she wanted to launch her YouTube page at our Half Mill Time to Grill and try and get all of our fans to watch and, and set up, right? So everyone, literally every Russ the Sus is filming. You've got everyone now in Otter Creek filming. 
and trying to be the first one to get all this information out on YouTube. Her last question says, what the hails is happening? So here's the difference. When you watch what the hails, we actually give you the educated aspect of what's happening and what's to come. There are those that are filming that can't even spell the name Biscuit, let alone understand what in the world is happening in this tiny town with this ridiculous amount of politicking, which is foolish to no extent. No comprehension at all. Just trying to ride coattails to get any type of fandom and fans and views possible. But we actually understand it. With us here, you, I, George, everybody watching, there's a level of intellect. There's a level of knowledge and wisdom that takes place. So we try and share with you to the best of our ability, even though there are so many layers of this story. And it, 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 all, <laughs> it all encompasses the same thing. And it all surrounds, even Court, even Amanda Martin, even being assaulted by her son, all ties into Otter Creek and Russell Meeks Sr., we try and explain it all so everybody understands. Now, there are some who understand extremely well because they're judges, they're lawyers. There are some that don't understand at all because they've never had any type of dealings with the court processes. There are some who watch and they go, will you please get me up to speed? I just started watching. I need a synopsis of everything that's gone on. And we all know if you've been a long-term fan, there is no way a short synopsis could actually happen with all this information. And the way that YouTube works is there are new viewers all the time. So we have old viewers say, hey, stop telling us the same information. We have new viewers that say, hey, we need all the old information. YouTube works the way YouTube works. It pushes out a video to a viewer. They get to see it. We do the best we can to explain it so everybody is on the same page watching. James Pack asked the question, how could Lynette possibly qualify to run for city council when she has a permanent protection order against her? All right, James, that, that's, that's a really good question, okay? Because so, number one, that permanent protection order, which is based off of myself and George, the town of Otter Creek is liable to actually enforce it. Now, the town of Otter Creek doesn't have a police force, but it had to be filed within the town of Otter Creek. And that means the council members are liable to enforce it. Did you see Russ the Sus do anything to enforce it? Did you see Don the Con do anything to enforce it? Uh, you didn't, right? Now, I could go on. I would say, did you see Vice Mayor Zim do anything to enforce it? He didn't. But they also don't understand their liability in having to enforce it, okay? So number two, regardless of what Russ the Sus lied to the deputies about, saying that they had a viable reason to be there because they were going to be employed by town council, there is absolutely no exception whatsoever in the civil protection orders. They cannot, for any reason, be within 500 feet of us. Therefore, they cannot run on the town council. And you're going, well, Jeremy and George, you're, you're headed back to Ohio for the summer. Yeah, and guess what? We're headed back to every town council meeting for the summer as well. Ye flights from Cleveland to Tampa, they're less than a hundred bucks round trip. You can't beat that. It'd take us a thousand dollars in diesel just to drive here and back.